Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Today we're going to be preparing a set of basic financial statements for a company during its first year of business. So up on the screen you see the data that we're going to be using. That's this data here. And we have Chamberlain Company that began business on January 1st, 2018. We're going to prepare an income statement, a statement of stockholders equity, and a balance sheet for the first calendar year of business. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all of our accounts and we're going to decide where each of them goes. And the reason we're going to do this is that as you go on, you're going to be creating longer and longer financial statements with more and more numbers in them. And it's going to save you a lot of time and also a lot of trouble if you have them classified first and you know how many accounts you have for each of the financial statements. So these are the classifications we're going to use. We're going to decide for each account, is it an asset, a liability, equity, revenue, or expense. So let's start with accounts payable. Payable tells you that the company is going to be paying money in the future. So if you're going to be paying money in the future, that means you owe somebody money and that is a liability. Okay. All right. So now hopefully you're familiar with most of these accounts. Pause the video for a couple of minutes um, and go down the list of accounts and decide where you would classify it. All right, and then when you're all done classifying, come back and you can check your answers. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you went through each of the accounts. So let's take a look at them. Next we have accounts receivable. All right, so sometimes students get accounts payable and accounts receivable mixed up, understandably, because they sound very similar, right? But look at the second word. Payable says that you're going to pay in the future. If you're going to pay somebody in the future, that means you owe them money and you have a liability. If you're going to receive money from some another company or an entity in the future, that is an asset. Okay, Accounts receivable means your customers owe you money and money is an asset. All right, speaking of money, we have cash. And cash is simply money. Cash is an asset. All right. Remember common stock. Common stock is that amount represents the money that was paid in by stockholders in exchange for shares of stock. So they gave the corporation money. The corporation gave them part ownership. And that is part of your equity. Okay. They're owners. All right. Dividends. Remember dividends are a distribution of profits and they come out of retained earnings. So technically dividends we're going to call an equity account because it reduces our retained earnings. Okay, equipment, um, that would be things like it depends what kind of company you have. Um, that could be a car or a truck or a machinery or a computer, anything like that. All right. So equipment is a resource, it's something owned by the company that's going to give us future benefit and that makes it an asset. All right, next up is notes payable. Remember when you see payable, you should think liability. So notes payable is similar to accounts payable, except that a note has a um, formal document that's signed, then it has a due date and also generally has interest associated with it. So a payable, remember we owe somebody money, that is a liability. All right, rent expense, money that we pay to rent the facilities that we use, that is going to be an expense. Generally speaking, when you see the word expense, it's going to be an expense. It makes it easy, except if you have a prepaid expense. All right, and remember prepaid expenses are actually assets. All right, next up is retained earnings. Retained earnings is exactly what it sounds like. It's sometimes a little bit confusing to students, but retained earnings is earnings or profits that have been retained or kept in the company. They haven't been paid out in dividends. All right, and retained earnings is part of equity. 
All right. Right now we have two pieces of stockholders equity. We have common stock and we have retained earnings. All right. Salaries expense is an expense. Service revenue is a revenue. Generally speaking, revenues and expenses have words associated with them like that. Service revenue um, is one type of revenue. The only kind of revenue that is not actually revenue is unearned revenue or deferred revenue. And we'll meet that later. Um, and that would be a liability. Okay. Supplies, again, a resource that we own. That could be things like um, ink cartridges for your computer, things like that. Pencils, those are assets. Now supplies expense is different than supplies. Supplies expense represents the supplies that you used up during the year. So supplies expense is an expense. Okay. All right. So now we have all of our accounts classified. Next, before we go forward, let's just remind ourselves what is on the financial statements. So on the income statement, remember the income statement shows revenues, oops, on caps, revenues minus expenses equals net income or if it's a minus number, net loss. Remember in accounting, if a number is negative, we often use brackets to indicate that it's negative. All right. And if your expenses are greater than your revenues, then you have a loss. Okay. Now our statement of stockholders equity has three columns. It has a common stock column. Oops. Common stock. It has a retained earnings column and it has a total column. Okay. And I just format these the same so you could see them better. Okay. And then we have a beginning balance for each of the three. The next thing we're going to look at is did we issue common stock? We're going to add our net income or subtract a net loss. We're going to subtract our dividends and that is going to give us our ending balance. Okay. That's that one's a little bit complicated. All right, and then on our balance sheet, our balance sheet shows the accounting equation. The balance sheet is simply assets equals liabilities plus equity. Okay. Okay. So now we have our three financial statements. Let's go back and start preparing them. All right. So over here we have uh, our format all set up for us. The first thing we're going to do is prepare the income statement. And I have all of the words here already. So um, let's start though with the heading. Remember this is called Chamberlain Corporation or Chamberlain Comp Company. And we are preparing an income statement for the first calendar year of business. So this is for the year ended December 31st, 2018. Okay. You want to make sure that your heading tells you the period of time, right? This tells the reader that it took them a year to earn this. All right. So we see our revenues and expenses. So we're going to start out with our service revenue and our service revenue is over here. I'm going to highlight these accounts as we use them. Service revenue is $50,000. Oops, let me put that where it belongs down here. Okay, then we have expenses. Now, what order do we want to put our expenses in? The three expenses we have are rent expense, salaries expense, and supplies expense. So generally speaking, we want to put our expenses in the order from highest to lowest, right? The ones that are the highest are of, of the most interest to a financial statement reader. So here we're going to first have our salaries expense. Let's highlight that so we know we did it. You can check it off on your paper. All right. Next up is rent expense. And then finally supplies expense. 
All right, so we're going to add up our total expenses and subtract them from our revenue. We're putting them over here just to clarify so that it's easier for a reader to see revenues minus expenses equals net income. Okay, so this is going to be a sum of these three. That is our total expenses, salaries plus rent plus supplies. And remember our net income is revenues minus expenses, so this is equal to our $50,000 minus our total expenses okay all right so our net income is 18,006 and then in accounting we use this double underline to tell the reader okay we're done stop reading okay that means this financial statement is finished all right so next up let's do our statement of stockholders equity the heading is going to look exactly like the other heading the name of the company is the same and the statement of stockholders equity is also for a period of time. So that is going to be for the year ended December 31st. All right. Okay. So now remember this company was not in existence last year. So that means that we don't have any balances in any of these accounts. These are all zero. Okay. We started out with zero because it's a new company. All right, how much common stock did we issue during the year? Well, we ended up with 30,000, so that must be the amount that we issued during the year. Okay, and then that goes right over here in our total. So we have a $30,000 issuance of common stock that only affects common stock. It does not affect retained earnings. Okay, the things that affect retained earnings are these other two things, net income and dividends. All right. Our net income for the period is right here. We just figured it out. All right. So you want to make sure that you do your income statement first because you need your net income here for your statement of stockholders equity. Okay. And the dividends are subtracted. So we're going to subtract our dividends to get our ending balance. Okay. We're going to put this over here. We're going to put this over here. All right. So now we're going to add down here. So our common stock was zero at the beginning. We added 30,000. Now we have 30,000 in total. Our retained earnings, we started with zero. We added 18,6. We subtracted 5,000. So now our ending balance is 13,6. And our total here, again, we're going to sum up. And this should add both ways. So it's going to add down this way and it's going to add across that way. So our total stockholders equity is 43,600. These numbers are now going to be carried down to our balance sheet. All right. Okay. So next up is our balance sheet, same company. Now a balance sheet is as of a point in time. It's not for a year ended or for a period of time. So our balance sheet is just going to be December 31st. 2018. Okay. All right. Now I've already listed our assets here. Um, our assets on our balance sheet, remember for GAAP, United States GAAP, our assets are listed in order of liquidity. So that means how fast can they turn into cash? So cash or cash and cash equivalents is always going to be the first asset on your balance sheet. Okay. So our cash is equal to 6,200 and let's highlight the things that we've used already. We've used dividends, we used our retained earnings, right? And now we used our cash. Okay. Our next most liquid asset is accounts receivable. Remember that's money that customers owe you. Most of the time you're going to receive your money from a customer within around a month. Okay. Depending on the terms of the sale. Okay, so accounts receivable is next. That's $4,000. Then we have supplies. Those are things like ink. Remember, we're going to use them fairly quickly. So that is the next most liquid. And the least liquid is equipment because equipment is going to be used for a long time, right? Equipment's not going to be used up or sold or turned into cash anytime in the near future. Okay, so let's highlight all of our assets. We know we have those all done. 
All right, now let's add up our, our assets, right? We're going to take each of these. We're going to add them up. And we have total assets of 67,600. Okay. All right, now let's look at our liabilities. We have two liabilities. One is accounts payable and one is notes payable. All right, so you have a choice with these. You could put, sometimes you put the largest first. Sometimes you put notes payable first. Actually, I don't think I've done either here. So I probably would switch these around. Let me switch these around so we have a better. Um, okay. fix these okay so so what we have now is we have our um, notes payable which are um, amounts that people signed a note for and then we have the accounts payable and the accounts payable are um, open accounts that's like say we bought some inventory or we bought some supplies and we haven't paid for them yet that's an account payable all right so let's add up our payables or our liabilities, we get total liabilities of $24,000. All right, so finally, we have our stockholders' equity. So our common stock we know is equal to our ending balance in common stock, and our retained earnings is equal to our ending balance in retained earnings. We add those together, so you can either sum them, or we already know the number because we have it here, and then we're going to add up this plus the um, retained earnings, I'm sorry, the total stockholders equity, and that gives us 67,006. All right, so very important, balance sheet. Why do we call it balance sheet? Because it balances. We have 67,006 here, we have 67,006 here. This is extremely important, right? Sometimes students get to their liabilities and they forget to finish their balance sheet. So make sure when you're done, you have these two numbers that are equal, okay? What other numbers are equal? All right, well, let's do the, our, um, whoops, let's do our equity numbers. These numbers are equal to those numbers, right? This number is equal to that number. So those numbers are all equal, right? So you want to make sure that the numbers here are the numbers there. What else is equal? The other thing that's equal is our net income for the period on our statement of stockholders' equity is equal to our net income for the period on our income statement. Okay? All right, so now we have finished up the three basic financial statements. I hope you find this useful in your studies, and good luck in your accounting course.